Welcome to Opinion Journal. I'm Mary Kissel. Government forces in Kenya have launched an operation to end the terrorist siege of a shopping mall in Nairobi. So more than 60 people are confirmed dead. And I'm going to go now to Assistant Book Editor Sorab Amari, who is here to discuss what's going on. Um, Sorab, I think a lot of people were surprised at this news mm -hmm. over the weekend mm -hmm. just by the, the scale of what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Is Africa really the new center on terror? It might not be the of new the center, but, it, but it's, cer it's certainly a front in the war on terror and an important front. Um, you know, earlier this year, we saw jihadis within a matter of days taking over a country called Mali, which is, you know, the si roughly the size of Texas. Um, we have, uh, obviously, Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups who have been very active in post-revolutionary Libya. And now, you know, we have this attack by the Somali group Al-Shabaab, Whose, whose demise was obviously predicted prematurely. And is this the result of American forces and coalition forces um, really kicking these terrorists out of Iraq and Afghanistan? I mean, mm -hmm. are, are they simply moving into Africa? Is yeah. that part of the dynamic? I think that might be a part of it, but there's also a, an indigenous element um, of, you know, of Somalis who are, um, you know, you have this really failed state in which uh, radicals of the Al-Qaeda variety, but also the Iranian regime, which has been trying to make inroads into this failed state um, to try to destabilize um, our friends and allies like, like Kenya and more stable countries. Wait, so you, when you region. say the Iranian regime is making inroads, yeah. so are we looking at the situation, perhaps the beginnings of another kind of proxy war like we had with the mm -hmm. Soviet Union in Africa? Well, you have, wherever you have instability, regimes that want to turn over the status quo want to go in and, and, and try to stake their claim um, and, and, and you know, get a, a, a slice of the, a slice of the Somali pie or the African pie, if you will. Um, so yeah, you have Iranians, you have various Al-Qaeda elements, and then you have our friends who are, who are uh, trying their best to, to create a completely different kind of Africa, but occasionally they're bit by these radicals. It, we've seen a kind of unlikely coalition here in the United States mm. when it comes to foreign policy and the reaction to things like yeah. this. On the left saying, you know, we fought those wars in the Mideast, we have to get out. Yeah. On the right, you have libertarians like Rand yeah. Paul saying, right. you know, not America's business, not yeah. our problem. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this attack over the weekend teach to uh, foreign policy types who are advocating those kinds of isolationist views? A, a couple of things. I think first it shows that the war on terror goes on. In other words, just because we are saying that the, the tides of war have, have uh, receded, as President Obama likes to say, doesn't mean it's in fact the case, or just because we think we don't have enemies, we don't in fact have enemies, we do. Um, the second, uh, I think, is that we have failed to, to really figure out what to do with our own Muslim communities. Um, we've uh, put hampered law enforcement when they've tried to um, listen in on the conversations that are happening in mosques and said, oh, you're violating folks' civil rights. Well, you have this groundswell of, of Muslims who are radicalizing in places that you would not expect, like Minneapolis, and going over to fight the jihad uh, in their native Somalia. Um, and the third thing is that, uh, that the U.S. national interests aren't narrowly down to just what happens at our borders. The U.S. is a global power that has an interest in places like Kenya, uh, people being able to shop safely. Um, and if we just define our national interests so narrowly the way folks like Senator um, uh, Rand Paul and Senator Ted Cruz do, then we're setting ourselves up for uh, the, the trouble that's happening there eventually encroaching on our, on our safety in the homeland. Less than 30 seconds yeah. left. Is there a lesson here too for the White House yeah. in that the president uh, has to continue to tell the American people, look, we'd, we'd like peace in the world, mm -hmm. but uh, there are still these terror threats out here so that when he does have to do something, the American people will support him. Yeah, well, he hasn't let, he, 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 the, the president has failed to say that we're, we're locked in an ideological battle with these groups uh, and with the states that sponsor them. And yet, occasionally he has to act um, because he's minimally responsible, for, he realizes that, but then he can't get the people to get behind him because he hasn't led on the message. He hasn't gotten in front of the people to say that we need to be an active power to, to push back against these forces. And so when he does, you have uh, of you know people essentially rebelling against them, be it from his own progressive base or this sort of the new isolationist right that's okay. that's growing. Well, the war on terror it continues. It Assistant goes on. Book Senator Sorabamari, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me.